Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us and good morning. I'm Steve. I'm Scott. And together we're Backyard Musings broadcast in Apple Valley, California. And the Science and Technology Channel. Got some celestial stuff going on. Um, and it's the title was A New Star. And I, I'm, I think that might be a misnomer because I think it's a coronal, a huge coronal discharge. I don't think it's a new star. We'll get in. We'll see. So the annual Eta awkward meteor shower peaks in the early morning hours of may 6 so that was this morning right yep yeah with a few meteors also visible on the nights leading up to the peak these fast moving meteors come from debris left behind by haley's comet and are best viewed in the hours before dawn so what was that seven hours ago eight hours ago meanwhile astronomers are keeping watch for a rare nova a sudden explosion of a different star that could appear to the naked eye sometime in the coming months. When it happens, the Nova will temporarily shine as bright as the North Star. Would you like to know more? I was supposed to get this slide ready. Yeah, I get show a slide. Let's, yeah, let's just talk. Let's talk through this. Give us your color commentary. Well, I was going to say, these things are kind of cool because you can actually go out and you don't need any high-powered yeah. uh, telescopes or, or binoculars, binoculars yeah. or anything it's like that. It's a nice you can, little yeah, shower. You can, you can see it as long as... Like yesterday, we were getting rain and clouds, so uh, today it would be a beautiful day to, to watch that. But skies are completely clear, but yeah, these are cool to be able to do this. Uh, I don't think there's as much um, excitement towards something like this as there would be um, like an eclipse or something like right. that, where the, you know, the whole country Or Haley's crazy. Comet passing by. Holy right. Haley's Comet, yeah, but... But the idea that you can just walk outside your house, as long as you're not living in an area that's really uh, illuminated by lights of a city or or a uh, you know, freeway or something like that, you can you could, uh, you could see this. I saw this. Eye. Yeah, I saw this um, 30 years ago when I was a cadet stationed at uh, Fort Huachuca for some training. It was like two, three weeks of training. And um, it, it was so dark in Sierra Vista that the whole thing just shot up like fireworks and you're like, wow. I mean, it pitched black out at Fort Huachuca and Sierra Vista. And it's, it's like, it's, it was a, it was a show, a celestial show. All right. We've got the slide up here. The slide is telling you where to find the Corona Borealis using the big dipper and where it's going to be. So we'll leave that up. So while we continue on. Yeah. So hopefully everybody can pretty much know where the big dipper is. Yeah. If they've looked at it for a while and, you can get apps on your phone or iPads and or any device yeah. now, and it'll tell you. You just hold it up, and it'll tell you where it is and what they are. Unless there was cool. an EMP blast, and then you yeah, can't that, use your yeah, that would not device. be good. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't be want to be holding on to it. So, right. astronomers have been waiting ex, uh, expectantly for light from a distant explosion to reach us here on Earth. Uh, an event called a nova is anticipated to occur sometime in the coming months. Some 3,000 light years away is a binary star called T Coronae Borealis, or T, what is that, Crib? CRB, TCRB. Okay. Yeah, crib, yeah. Uh, it consists of a red giant star with a smaller white dwarf star orbiting closely around it. Now the giant's outer uh, atmosphere is all puffed up, and the dwarf star is close enough that it's gravity. Gravity continually captures some of the giant's hydrogen. About eighty, uh, about every eighty years, the white dwarf has accumulated so much of the other star's hydrogen that it ignites a thermonuclear explosion, and that's the nova. So that's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. So I don't so know if you call like that a, tail? a new star. Do we look like it? Does it look no, like, be a like a tail? flash? Just like a like big a flash. Flash. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how long it lasts. And it's so. moving, right? No, it's the it's oh, the, it's just stationary the star. Yeah, it's the, the okay. brown dwarf. Okay, it's a star. So T Corona Borealis is located in the constellation Corona Borealis, or the Northern Crown, and it's normally far too faint to see with the unaided eye. But it's predicted the nova will be as bright as the constellation's brightest star, which about is is as bright as the North Star Polaris. You'll find Corona Borealis right in between two bright stars, Arcturus and Vega. Arcturus has a yellowish, orangish color, oh. Vega. And you can use the Big Dipper's handle to point you in the right part of the sky. Oh. Um, try having a look for it on clear, dark nights before the Nova, so you'll have a comparison when a new star suddenly becomes visible there. You might be able to pick it with nice binoculars. You know? Yeah, I'm trying to think. It's been a while since I've been outside to look at the Big Dipper. And I don't even know where it's located right now. But again, you can find that out on. Yeah, just use the North Star to 
locate where the dipper is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, astronomers started keeping watch for the Nova midway through 2024, but it hasn't uh, happened yet. I think we did a story last year. I'm pretty sure we did a story on this last year. Predicting exactly when Nova's or any sort of stellar outbursts will happen is tricky, but the excitement began growing when astronomers observed observe the star to, to dim suddenly, much as it did right before its previous Nova in 1946. So what is that, about 80 years? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When the Nova finally does occur, it won't stay bright for long, uh, likely flaring in peak brightness for only a few days. And since it's not predicted again for another 80 years, you might just want to join the watch for the super rare naked eye stellar explosion in the sky. Yeah. So, yeah, these are kind of cool. So, as we said at the beginning, May 6th, that's today, brings the annual Eta Aquarid meteor shower. These are meteors that originate from Comet Haley. Earth passes through the comet's dust stream each May. And again in October, Eta Aquarids are fast moving, and a lot of them produce persistent dust trains that linger for seconds at the me at the meteor's initial streak. Hmm. Uh, this is one of the best annual showers in the southern hemisphere, but tends to be more subdued north of the equator, uh, where we typically see 10 to 20 meteors per hour. On the peak night this, this year, the moon sets by around 3 a.m., leaving dark skies until dawn for ideal viewing conditions. While the peak is early on um, the morning of May 6th, the two or three nights before that are also decent opportunities to spy a few shooting stars. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, cool. for planet watching this month, you'll find Mars and Jupiter in the west following sunset. So, you look out towards the ocean, you know. Mm -hmm. Mars sticks around for several hours after it gets dark out, but Jupiter is setting by 9 30 or 10 p.m. and getting lower in the sky each day. The first quarter moon appears right next to the red planet, Mars, yeah. on the third find them in the west during the first half of the night that evening uh so may 3rd mars and moon the first quarter moon appears right next to the red planet on the third find them in the west during the first half of the night that evening uh, all month venus and saturn low in the eastern sky each morning you'll find bright venus paired with much fainter saturn so yeah we can you can see venus that's usually one of the first oh, ones you can yeah. see because it's one of the closest planets yeah. or and brightest too yeah they start the month uh, close together, but Saturn pulls away and rises higher over the course of the month. All month, Mars and Jupiter, uh, the planets to, to look for on May evenings are Mars and Jupiter. They're visible for a couple of hours after sunset in the western sky. And if you haven't gotten a telescope to look at the, or a good binoculars to look at the moons of Jupiter, it's flabbergasting. When, when you see it, you're like, wow, those are moons that are, you know, going around. Jupiter. Yeah. All right, we talked about it. We have a, a little observatory here. Yep. Um, and then there's uh, the Griffith Park Observatory. And I don't know if they still, you could still go down there and and look through their their telescope. Um, you know, you used to be able to do that. but And then, of course, there's people that have pretty powerful home telescopes that you can use. But Yeah, the amateur yeah. astronomers yeah. that are part of the club. Yeah, yeah it's cool stuff. So, but. yeah. So look for the Nova anytime soon this year, maybe this month, right? Definitely this month and into June. The Nova, right? I don't know. Oh, you don't, don't think so? Uh, they said every eighty years, but they said that it's going to um, dim and then poof, burst. Oh, so just for, a flash. Yeah, for a couple of days. Couple of days. Yeah, okay. but they don't know exactly when. So even though it kind of looks kind of crazy when you're looking to the sky, just yeah. When check we were, it out. remember we were doing signs of the times celestial, this is one of the things we picked up on last year. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. We'll catch you in the afternoon. Take care, everyone. Thank you.